the site of a large vessel berthing at the port of Felixstowe. It showed that goods are imported and exported to nearly 400 ports all over the world. Felixstowe is a hub port for the huge container ships that trade with ports in the Far East. We've become accustomed to these ships bringing in goods from places like China, Japan and Korea. But 500 years ago, the desire to trade with such far-flung places was changing the map of the world. The travels of Marco Polo in the 13th century opened European imaginations to the possibility of trade in spices, precious metals and jewels from Asia. But a route over land was potentially hazardous and navigators in Europe began to consider finding sea routes. The Portuguese started to look for sea routes eastwards by trying to find a way to the south of Africa. Others considered going westwards across the unknown Atlantic Ocean. But how far was it to the Orient? Some believed that it wasn't very far. An Italian astronomer Toscanelli produced a map in 1474 suggesting that the distance from Europe to China was about 2,000 miles rather than the 8,000 miles originally thought. In those days an 8,000 mile voyage without landing somewhere was inconceivable, but 2,000 was just about doable. The question was, who was going to take Toscanelli seriously and attempt a voyage? For that answer let's go to the port of El Puerto de Santa Maria, which is near Cadiz in the southwest of Spain. The port has a long and distinguished history. Being in the Jerez region, it was the place where sherry was exported from. But its other claim to fame was that it was the port where Christopher Columbus started two of his four voyages to the New World. Columbus was Genoese, but persuaded King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain to fund an expedition. It was to start at the port of Palos de la Frontera, just up the coast near Huelva on the border with Portugal. Columbus was to use the ship, the Santa Maria, belonging to his friend, navigator and cartographer Juan de la Cosa, who was based at El Puerto. At Palos, Columbus teamed up with Martín and Vicente Pinzón, who had enough influence to be able to hire crew for what was a trip into the unknown. They kept in their own ships, the Pinta and the Niña. They were experienced navigators and had already come to the conclusion that the nature and strength of the Atlantic currents meant that there must be landfall approximately 2,000 miles from the Canary Islands. On the 3rd of August 1492, the three ships set sail for the Canaries and then set out with the winds and currents across the Atlantic on the 9th of September. The Pinthons were right and land was sighted on the 12th of October, which we now call the Bahamas. The expedition explored several Caribbean islands before sailing north and east with the currents, which took them back to Portugal and then Spain. All lands were claimed for Spain, and Columbus led three other expeditions to map what he thought was somewhere near India, two of them from El Puerto de Santa Maria, where his flagship was based. In fact, the port became an important staging town for trade with the New World in these early days. Because Columbus, to his dying day, thought he'd found a route to India, the continent that he did discover was named America, after another Italian explorer who followed him, Amerigo Vespucci. The story of Columbus is a good example of what faith is all about. You see, many people think that faith is just kind of a, a stab in the dark, taking a chance, taking a gamble where there's no rhyme or reason behind it. But actually, Columbus set out for America, not on the basis of a stab in the dark, but on the basis of what people had been studying for some time in terms of how big the world might be and how wide the gap between Europe and the Far East might be. Many of their calculations were wrong, but what it did end up is Columbus discovering a whole new world. They didn't know for sure what was out there. Columbus put his faith in Toscanelli's map, whereas the more practical Pinthons put their faith in their experience of navigating the Atlantic to believe there was land out there. But to get there they had to take a step of faith and go. They knew there were potential risks. 
This is a replica of the Nina in El Puerto. It was a caravel, a small trader. That's a small car in front of it. It was a huge risk to brave Atlantic storms in ships so small. They had to be sure that there was something out there. They went, and it made Columbus and the Pinsons very rich. For Europeans it changed the whole map of the world and opened up a new continent for exploration. I never expect people to trust in Jesus on a whim because behind trusting Jesus there's the evidence of history, there's the evidence of archaeology and there's the evidence of him touching people's lives not just in his lifetime but all the way down the century and even today. And it's on that basis that I place my faith not on just a whim, but on history and experience. Here's a few words from the Bible. What is faith? It's the confident assurance that what we hope for is going to happen. It's the evidence of things we cannot yet see. How can we be so sure of things we hope for, yet can't see? In this particular chapter of Hebrews, the writer goes through a whole series of people in the Bible and reminds his readers of all the amazing things that happened when they trusted God. The experience of making a step of faith and trusting God and following Jesus is finding not only that there's much more to it than you ever imagined, but that you can rely on his promises for the things you don't yet see or experience. And Jesus calls on each man and each woman to trust and follow him today, to find hope in life and to find hope in eternity as well. Will you follow him?